Flavius Aetius was born in 391 in the province of Moesia along the lower Danube. When the reigning emperor Theodosius died a few years later in 395, the empire was permanently divided between his minor sons Honorius in Ravenna and Arcadius in Constantinople. The son of a prominent Roman general, Aetius was enrolled in military service at a young age, and as part of the empire's treaty relations with barbarians, he was sent as a good faith hostage first to the Visigoths and later to the Huns. While Aetius built valuable contacts among his hosts, numerous invaders spilled over the empire's frontiers. First, the Alans, Swaby, and Vandals famously crossed the Rhine in 406, eventually settling in Spain. Meanwhile, the Visigoths continued their volatile relations with the empire, sacking Rome in 410, then assisting the Romans against the Alans in Spain, and then establishing themselves in Aquitaine by 418. Meanwhile, the Franks and Burgundians steadily encroached on Gaul. Unlike previous migrants, these tribes maintained unassimilated cohesive identities, reshaping the empire's internal politics. The disruptions were exacerbated by numerous civil wars, which prompted the gradual abandonment of Britain and loosened imperial authority in peripheral areas. This was the state of the empire upon the death of Honorius in 423, which terminated the Hunnic Treaty and allowed Aetius to return to Ravenna. The resulting succession struggle aligned Valentinian III, true-born heir of the Theodosian dynasty, against Ioannis, a bureaucrat championed by the officials in Ravenna. Aetius mustered an army of Hunnic allies in support of the latter, but when Ioannis was killed in 425, he submitted to Valentinian in exchange for a coveted military commission. Thus, at the outset of Valentinian's reign in 425, the western military apparatus was led by Felix in Italy, Aetius in Gaul, and Bonifacius in Africa. During these years, Aetius achieved important victories over the Visigoths and Franks, but the competitive arrangement among the three generals was entirely untenable. As squabbling erupted between them, the Vandals crossed into North Africa in 429 to threaten Carthage. This as the Swabi extended their reach in Spain, the Franks pressed west into Gaul, and the Visigoths tightened their grip on Aquitaine, all while the imperial hinterland continued to slip away. With tensions mounting, Aetius moved against Felix in Italy in 430, killing him and assuming his command, leaving only Bonifacius as rival. He then defeated the Alemanni in Raetia, the Nori in Noricum, and the Franks along the Rhine. When he finally did face Bonifacius at Rimini in 432, Aetius was decisively defeated. Nevertheless, Bonifacius died from his wounds from the battle, and Aetius became the preeminent general in the west by 433. With the support of his Hunnic allies, Aetius spent the next years stabilizing the Western Empire, checking Vandal and Visigothic expansion, defeating the Burgundians and later settling them alongside the remaining Alans in Gaul, and re-establishing imperial authority in Spain. By early 439, with Aetius at the helm, the Western Roman Empire seemed poised to recover. But it was not to be. In 439, the Hunnic king Rua died, succeeded by his fearsome nephew Attila, and the Vandals captured Carthage, a core imperial tax base. The double blow deprived Aetius of his Hunnic support and bankrupted the empire. In direct consequence, Aetius was forced to cede Pannonia to the Huns in 443. Then the Franks seized more of Gaul, and the Swaby overran much of Spain. By 446, a neglected Britain drifted away entirely. The greatest peril materialized in 451, when Attila turned his full attention west. Invoking imperial family squabbles as a pretext, Attila invaded Gaul, laying siege to Aurelianum and terrifying all before him. It was here, facing the infamous Scourge of God, that Aetius assembled a sweeping coalition of Romans, Visigoths, Franks, Alans, and Burgundians. He forced the Huns to lift their siege, and then fought them to a standstill at the Battle of the Catalonian Fields in 451. Although a draw, the battle permanently shattered the myth of Hunnic invincibility. Thwarted in Gaul, Attila next invaded Italy, raising Aquilia and reaching the Po River. Harried by Aetius and facing a separate Roman attack at home, Attila treated with Pope Leo and then withdrew, sparing Rome. But within a year, Attila himself was dead, and facing a major rebellion of their subjects, the Huns themselves were decisively defeated at the Battle of Nadao in 454, never to recover. However, their collapse eliminated the looming threat that had unified the court behind Aetius. That same year, he was murdered on Valentinian's orders, followed quickly by the emperor himself in an act of vengeance. 
Aetius' death deprived the empire of its last bulwark against collapse. The next year, Rome was sacked again by the Vandals, and two decades later, the remainder of the Western Empire was completely overrun. The repeated setbacks during Aetius' lifetime, and the empire's rapid disintegration after his death, led many to believe that he merely papered over the empire's terminal decline. For his role in delaying this fate, he was mourned by many as the last Roman.